afternoon and welcome in to Studio 5 where, hey, in just a couple of days, that greeting will become good morning. I'm going to have, to have to get used to saying that all over again. We hope you're planning to turn back the clock with us beginning on Monday when our show returns to 11 a.m. here on Channel 5. It's something so many of you have been asking for for quite a while. And speaking of frequent comments, so often women who know I host a show centered around happy living and creative solutions, they'll comment, I wish I was more creative. I wish I could do this project or that project that my right brain kicked in a little bit more often. Well, when I hear that, my mind goes to a quote from religious leader Dieter F. Uchtdorf, who once said that everyone can create. He said, you don't need money, position, or influence to create something of substance or of beauty. Well, my first guest this afternoon agrees with that statement. In fact, she's focused in on five creativity myths too many women believe. Studio 5 contributor Julie Hanks is the owner of Wasatch Family Therapy. Do you think women miss out overall when we so casually dismiss our creative potential? Yes, we totally dismiss, and every, I even find myself doing it, and people tend to think of me as a creative You're person. You're a very creative person. But I think, oh, I can't, oh, I can't do that. And so that is the number one myth, I think, is that it, it, it's impossible to be human and to not be creative. It's so innate. You've it's built, innate, you yeah. Think about every day you're creating something new. Every relationship, every conversation that we have is something that we haven't had before in the same way. And so everyone is creative. Creativity is so much more than, than doing crafts, although that can encompass it. Sure. It's taking what's there and making something new out of existing material. So fair to say the spark of a solution when it comes to that idea, I'm not creative, I wish mm -hmm. I was more creative, it really comes down to broadening our definition of creativity, yeah. what it really is. Yeah, and it, yeah, it's not just the arts. It's not just, um, you know, singing, dancing, painting, drawing, and doing crafts. It's it's. It can be an approach to life. So the person who says, I wasn't born creative, I don't have a creative bone in my body, you mm -hmm. just simply say not true. That is not true. And there's a really great quote. This is actually from my dissertation because <laughs> I studied women and creativity, which is awesome. But basically it says creativity isn't something we're born with or not. It's not, it's not like an in internal organ. It's a process. It has to be nurtured, encouraged, and improved. It's a way of thinking and of being. It can be learned through a gradual process of opening ourselves up to the world. And I love that quote. It's a great quote. Because it, it, it really does expand our definition um, beyond arts and crafts to an approach to life and I, openness. I also hear that quote and my mind goes to patience, the need to maybe enjoy that process a little bit more. Right. We're such a society of instant gratification, it feels like that if right. that creative moment doesn't strike as a lightning bolt, in the second that we need it, yeah. we kind of toss it aside. So having <laughs> patience in the process is a lesson to be learned too. That's true. It reminds me, my, uh, my dad is a professional musician and people would say, oh, I wish I could play the piano like you. And he's like, really? Then you'd stay in every lunchtime during junior high and high school and practice and every date would be to you know, come and hear me play the piano somewhere. <laughs> and so you have to pay a price um, and, it, and it does, there's this unfolding. Creative myth number two is that creativity is an individual activity. You say not true. It is not true. It is always social. So um, did you watch the Oscars? I did, here and there, throughout okay. the night, yeah. Did you watch Julianne Moore? Yes. Oh my goodness. Powerful. So I've seen that movie twice. I just went again last night to see Still Alice. One thing I, that really touched me in her speech was she said, uh, she, she thanked the other nominees for how much they had inspired her. And she was so gracious in thanking her family and all of the people involved in the film. And so that just um, reinforced to me, even if it looks like it's an individual, that was an individual performance. Right, an individual award, best actress. Right, right, and her, you know, she had this performance, but there is this team of people supporting her that that and nurtured her all along that process and so there's this you know myth that it's this lone genius in a room by themselves and they're struck with this bolt of you know inspiration um, it, it's always it always involves a lot of people in nurturing that person to that point mm -hmm. how as women then can we still find solid validation and accomplishment, knowing that it is a group, group effort sometimes, whether it be an idea that is born around the table of a PTA meeting, or when multiple people come together, sometimes that takes away from the individual satisfaction, or at least we perceive that it does. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't. I mean, if we think about how interconnected we are as, as human beings, I mean, we need 
relationships to physically survive. And so it doesn't take anything away to share it and to be, be generous in giving credit to, to the support people too. Well said. And well women said. often play the support role and don't get included in that creativity. One, and one of the th um, things I learned in my research is that in engendering talent in other people is a creative effort. Like take, nurturing another human being is the ultimate creativity. Yeah, to that point, motherhood. I mean, enter right. creativity at right. its fullest. You're actually creating a human being yeah. that, and nurturing them. I mean, that. No better, no yeah, better no be demonstration of creativity. <laughs> right. I talked about that lightning bolt moment, that yeah. aha, so to speak. And yeah. we put a lot of emphasis on that, but you say it doesn't always happen in a single moment or a second. Yeah, and it, in fact, it never does. Um, there are there are actually four stages. Um, there's there's a uh, theorist, Wallace, and he says there's preparation. So that's learning about whatever it is you're trying to create. And then there's an incubation period where you walk away and you don't think about it and your subconscious is working on it. Uh -huh. And then there's that illumination. So those two steps may take decades. Or they may take decades, it's not, or it may take a day. And then verification is, you know, is this a good idea? Is this helpful or useful. You mentioned in your therapy, oftentimes a creative solution will result after months of therapy work one-on-one -on -one with a client. Yeah, so I've had um, more than one client say, oh, this, ses this session was, was so, so eye-opening. I just had this big aha about how I'm contributing to this negative pattern in my relationship. And I just smile and you know nod and I think, yeah, and it's the five months before the, the <laughs> preparation right. that led, and the times when you're not in therapy that led to that aha moment. So again, be patient with that process. We talked yeah. about creativity not always equaling an artistic pro a product or a project. Mm -hmm. Myth number five, though, piqued my interest. Creativity mm -hmm. always results in a product. You say not true. Um, no, it, it doesn't. And we think about, again, creativity. It's like, oh, it's a book or it's a Painting. poem, yeah. or, right? No, so much of the creativity that we do every day is is a process. And I think as, particularly as women, it's important to remember that we are always just taking what we have and and doing something with it that's new. You had a creative mom moment not too long ago. I did, so I was driving 45 minutes, uh, my two youngest kids, eight and 12, to a choir rehearsal. And they were, it was one of those afternoons, they were hungry, they were tired, it was after school, long drive, and they were just at each other, you know, don't take, Lovely. he's touching yes. me, oh, you can just imagine <laughs> it. And so I finally get to, it was a music store where the rehearsal was, walk in, I'm like, oh, good, good riddance, you know, <laughs> see you in two hours. So, and I'm walking around the music store and I see some just little cheap percussion instruments. And so I ended up buying them and I, I hit them in the car. And when they came out, I just said, okay, you are going to play these all the way home. And I blasted the music and we sang and they were, you know, I want to do oh, the tambourine. Fun. I want to do the tambourine. What a mood changer. And, yeah, and so I thought that was a, you know, we didn't record that moment. It wasn't on YouTube. It was a process of taking what was available, what presented itself, yeah. and solving a problem and through I think a process. <laughs> just recognizing those creative moments that might seem a little bit out of the box by the standard yeah. definition fuels future creative moments. Yes, so, yeah, it really does. As a show that celebrates creativity in all forms, <laughs> Julie, we appreciate this conversation. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brooke. You're putting a call out for creative stories, creative experiences. Yes, yes. Um, HighlyCreativeWomen.com. I'm looking just to feature women and their creativity in, in a broad sense, not just poems, songs, paintings, but just creative things that you do. And there's a, a submission form on there. So I would just love... Um, Love our viewers to, to do that. Fantastic. And, and submit their ideas. And also I want to give voice to a lot of different forms of creativity. I love it. It's great. It's a great opportunity to redefine what we think of as creative. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brooke.